long as I can remember, I've always been making art. I um, actually just received some old pieces that my mom had given me, and it was funny to see that a lot of them actually had collage in them from probably five and six years old. Um, and as a kid, like, I was always chasing the things as a little boy, like, you know, vans, custom vans of the 70s, superheroes, karate, um, you know, things like that. And, uh, and then so that kind of, I always had a marker in my hand, I always had a pen in my hand, I was always getting into trouble drawing something on the door of my uh, bedroom. Um, so it was just something that was kind of in me. I started off doing graphic design and illustration and that was great and it was fulfilling for a lot of years and at some point in the late 90s I realized I had something that I wanted to, I had a voice that I wanted to use that wasn't getting used in graphic design, it wasn't getting used in illustration because you're always dealing with an art director at that level and I started painting at night for myself and just doing what I wanted to do and building a big body of work um, and then I guess around 2002, when I was living in Portland, I started pursuing showing in galleries. So I think the biggest change and what really solidified what I'm doing today came uh, in, I guess, about 2003. I was working for Adidas and traveling all over the United States, and I started to notice a couple things. I started to notice recurring themes of these neon signs, these motels, like this, this uh, roadside culture that I had never experienced before. And then I realized that when I lived in Los Angeles for six years, it was everywhere. And it was the one thing that I took out of Los Angeles. I feel like it was the, the very shiny part of it, the beautiful part of it. The more I realized that this culture is going away, it kind of made me sad. You know, I'd go through these small towns and there were these beautiful handcrafted signs that were just falling into decay. And so I felt like I really wanted to go around, document them, and kind of preserve them, you know, because they're going to be gone. And so that's kind of where that, that started. And from 2003 to, I guess, about 2008 or 2009, I logged a lot of miles, like thousands of miles, just going to small towns in, in the Southwest and in the Midwest, and just really documenting what was left of these towns from the 1950s culture of American, I guess, it's, I guess it's kind of um, automobile culture. In 2005, when I moved back to New York, is when things really started to change. Instead of having shows at galleries, I started to be represented by a gallery on a full-time basis. And I think that's where you know, the, the switch happened from being a part-time artist to being a full-time artist. My pieces all start off on panels with a two inch or three inch cradle. And I build up layers of brown paper bag and that becomes the base. And then after that, I'll do layers of paint and sort of like an underpainting with different brighter colors. Um, and then do vintage ephemera, like, you know, old road maps, look and life magazines, just things that kind of like build up the surface. And at a certain point when I've kind of pleased the surface, then I'll take, uh, I'll take sandpaper to the whole thing, and that sort of creates the weathering effect. Uh, it sort of gives it a, a history. Then we start doing the transfers, which are the main icons, the black in the piece. And after that, uh, I'll continue to just collage things in there, little, little quotes and things to kind of, little tongue-in-cheek things. One of the things that's changed in the past year and a half is that I started including neon tubing into some of the pieces. And I feel like that's pretty significant. It comes from what I was doing in the past, taking photos of these old neon pieces and then transforming them into, you know, flat artwork. And now I think taking the neon and bringing them in, it's kind of nice because it becomes a sculptural element, but it hangs on the wall. And it makes perfect sense because neon is, has become American culture. I feel like today there's not really any icons that exist and it might partially have something to do with the fact that, you know, whereas there was 15 minutes of, of fame, now there's 15 seconds of fame. Everyone's famous if they have a blog, if they did something on YouTube, whatever it is, but 
back then, uh, people like Marilyn Monroe and people like Audrey Hepburn, they had managers. They couldn't go out wearing sweatpants. You know, they had, in their contracts, they had to look glamorous at all times. And I think that that's something that was very important because as much as these people had problems like the rest of us in their lives, it never showed. And so they remained glamorous throughout their career, in, after their death, and you know, they're, today you see everything. You see the sloppiness, you know, you see the scandal of, of these, I guess, you know, the icons of our culture. But I don't feel like they're going to remain, you know, I don't think that in 30 years someone that's popular today is going to have endured that many years. You know, with the exception, I think, of Kate Moss. I think Kate Moss has come through everything unscathed, you know, and it just, as with Marilyn, her face is her, her brand. One of the things that when I make art that I try and think about is how iconic an image can be. And I think today it's sort of missing. You know, when you look back at, say, the Vietnam War, like these, these images, they were icons and they defined the moment of the Vietnam War. And I feel like none of those things actually happen anymore. Like there's no defining photo from Afghanistan or from Iraq. Um, and I think it might be because there's so much media that happens and it's so immediate that you don't actually focus on anything. You're sort of bombarded with 27 of the same photos from different angles. And I feel like so this, this was, you had to capture this moment. And so that's one of the things I try and bring into my work is making sure that these things are iconic and then will stand the test of time.